<laughs> I am a people's person. Um, I'm a fighter. I'm a positive energy. And I'm just a good person overall that likes to give back. And, you know, that always keeps it real and likes to have fun. <laughs> nice. Oh. So which one which one came first that you started noticing this beautiful gift? Was it the boxing or you're like, you know what? I'm a great human being and I want to help others. Which one came first to you? That I'm a good human being and I want to help others. I've been like that since I was little. I always been that person mm -hmm. you know if, if i see somebody get bullied in school i was the one to be like yo chill <laughs> like you know or, <laughs> or you know if i was a little girl and i seen like a, a homeless person i'm like mommy mommy you know i was sure like mommy, let's get them get them up give me a quarter mommy a dollar uh, you know so yeah. i i always been that person uh full of compassion to yeah. you know if i always see somebody struggling you know try to, i would try to do my best to help them out Nice. That's, That's beautiful. beautiful. <laughs> that came first. That was always in me. That mm -hmm. came from you. You didn't even have anyone like teach you that. It was just that was how yeah. you would want. But then yeah. now with all this kindness, what switched for you to like Be start fucking, fucking fuck people, people up in the ring? <laughs> 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 yeah. But fucking them up with kindness too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean the fight, the fighting. Actually, the fighting came from, like, um, my household. You know, I, I was an abused child. I grew up in a mm. violent household, you know, okay. uh, uh, fighting between my parents and then mm. the tail end of it. So that's something I grew up seeing. So, you know, when I was in a house getting beat up and everything, I was on myself, when I leave this house, this ain't happening. You know, if somebody trying to run up on me, put hands on me, it's a wrap. Because, you know, as a kid, you have so much built up anger inside. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of people don't know what's going on inside the houses, mm -hmm. you know? So if something, if there was an altercation happened outside, man, all that anger I had inside, they was they was catching it. Mm -hmm. You needed a, a tool. Did right. you ever so want thing, to... When you were home and you saw that happening, did you ever, your, like, fighting spirit, did you ever want to also hit like your dad for not hitting your mom did you ever want to get in or it was something that you just held in and took it oh no <laughs> no <laughs> i wasn't getting into that okay. <laughs> I, I, I mind my business, <laughs> what, did, my business. Uh, what did the boxing uh help you during those times of in, 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 in regards of releasing started. you know re yeah you know really the, box, the boxing was pretty much like an outlet for me because i was lost you know I'm growing up in a Caribbean household, you know. Mm -hmm. um, my parents, you know, they're Haitian. They're from the island. So they're real strict, you know what I'm saying? They think, like, I fed you. You got somewhere to live. That's it. There's no conversation. There's mm -hmm. not what you want to do. You know, you know what I'm saying? It's go to school. They're going to go to college. You get married, have kids, work a nine to five, and that's it. They did their job, mm -hmm. you know? So I never, I, ne I didn't really have no guidance, nothing, you know? So... I pretty much was lost, misunderstood. Uh, I, I had no guidance, you know. I got, I learned everything from my friends, and mm -hmm. you know that ain't, they, that's not the best. They don't have the best ideas or the best choices, mm -hmm. you know. But that's where I, I look for that. I look for that love from my friends outside and to teach me about, you know, things that my mother should have taught me. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know. So when I found boxing, it was an outlet because. You know, I got sent to Haiti. I told I was going there for a weekend. And I was left there for a year, oh, you know? Wow. And so when I went to Haiti, I, I came back a different person. And I just became rebellious. I was angry, you know? Now I just was just, like, lost in the world. And when I found boxing, that's the only place I felt safe. Because mm -hmm. I didn't have dreams of being a boxer. I didn't have, I never had a weight loss problem. Before boxing, mm -hmm. I was running track, two-time All-American. Um, I wanted to be a nurse. The only reason why I wanted to be a nurse because my mother would always put that in my head. And Haitian mothers always want their daughters to be a nurse, to be a nurse. So I said, okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to be a nurse. You know? Mm -hmm. um, but boxing never was, the closest thing to boxing, the Nintendo, Mike Tyson punch out. That's the only thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. And yeah, that, that's it. I, Started, when I got into the gym and I started realizing, oh, there's other girls that fight. You what know? made you and go into the gym? What was that day like for you to say, this is going to be the day that I'm going to go to the gym? Uh, or well, <laughs> I was with my cousin, right? He's always up to no good. Okay. And I said, yo, where you be going? 
Mm. I was, you know, he never wants to tell me. So I'm like, you know what? I got you. So I followed him one day. He didn't know I followed him. I see him going to this building. <laughs> That's great. I'm like, oh, you, I'm telling, I'm thinking to myself, like, oh, you up to no good. What's in this building? So I went in the building and I seen it ring. I seen a heavy bag and I just forgot that I was following him. I went to the coast. I'm like, can girls box? I'm not <laughs> nice. on the bike. And my cousin was like, what are you doing here? I was like, oops. <laughs> <laughs> How old were you? And that's how I all started. <laughs> how but old before, were you? but before boxing, I was already getting into fights. Okay. It was crazy. I was like a little tomboy and getting into fights. How old were so you when boxing, that happened? I just learned the, you know, the 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 basics and how to, <laughs> you know, I wasn't, you know, doing this, that, that. So bad. You know, learning the technique the right way. Yeah. <laughs> And what what was um besides boxing? What helped you to heal the trauma from growing up? And like mm-hmm. you said, you said you were you was lost in this world. When did you start finding your way? In a sense that not that you have all the answers, but you start making a change to the person that you once were and start healing the trauma that you experienced growing up. The boxing, you know, when you go, when you go into the boxing, I learned uh, patience and uh, it. I learned. Um, how to, you know, control that anger. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's, you go into a fight. Mm-hmm. If you're not composed, you lost already. Mm-hmm. You know? You got to, when you go in the ring, you have to be calm. If you're going in there all outraged, you're, mm-hmm. you're not focused. You know what I'm saying? So boxing, you know, really showed me how to focus, keep my composure, be disciplined, and, and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. the, the boxing really played a big part of my life. What? Who was your mentor when you were boxing? Like, who was was it one person that when you went there, I'm, I'm interested, I'm, I want to, and somebody was like, okay, here, I'm going to teach you the ropes. Did you have one particular person that you, that influenced you and helped you mentor you? Absolutely not, because okay. <laughs> boxing, the boxing world is full of snakes, you know, mm. um, even though the boxing it was a big part of my healing. It also hurt me too, because a lot of people in the mm. boxing world try to take advantage of me, you know, because mm. I didn't really know nothing coming in the game. I didn't know. I just knew that I could fight, but I didn't know the business side of it. Right. You know, I didn't have, I didn't come in this game with a team. I didn't right. come in with somebody to show me, like, all right, mister, this is how, this is, this is, this, this is that. I didn't know. I was just like, yo, I was, yo, I was taking hard fights. Send mm. the contract. I fight her, I fight her, I fight her, because mm. I know I can fight, and I know I ain't scared of nobody. You know, but I didn't know the end of boxing. I didn't know this and that. And um, I, I kind of, you know, hit a couple hurdles. Yeah. How did you get to the place where you started to know? Like, what was that journey like? Well, um, after my fourth pro fight, I, I met my manager, Brian Cohen, who I'm currently still with. And um, he, he, he protected me. You know, mm. he really cared for me, and and I, I met him through my friend Ronica Jeff. We had a couple of female fighters, and me and Ronica training Gleason's together, and you know, having her around and him. I for the first time in boxing, I had somebody like, I got you, right? Okay. You know, so I think that's when everything that's when everything changed. You know, then I became a champion. I still would take a hard fights, but mm. my manager knew like, yo, you built for this. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? We don't need to cherry pick, like cherry pick, do like the other girls and give you a whole bunch of bones, build your racket. You mm-hmm. can really fight. So, you know, and I proved that in the boxing world and to him. And then, you know, right now I'm current, the current NABO champion. I'm number nice. one in the USA, number two in the world right now. Congrats. You know, and I really owe that to um, my manager. Mm. And to yourself too, because yeah, you, you were the, the one in the ring. Yeah, yeah and you're doing all the hard <laughs> yeah. work too. <laughs> What, uh, but, what you is, know, I had somebody that believed in me. A lot of people, yeah, you know, you know, and you believed in yourself. A lot of people don't know being a female, you know, in the boxing world is hard, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of these niggas just want to fuck. Yeah. Oh, you're not oh. opening your legs, they're mm. not training you, you know, go do your own thing, you mm. know, and it's like, and they don't take you serious, they don't take you serious. How do you so? How did you overcome that mm. and keep your focus to keep doing what you love, right? Because And there's a lot of artists that we know in general, like that type of world can be toxic and you can lose your way and become something that you're not. So how do you remain true to yourself 
with this toxic world that you're around, but also there's some few good ones like you like you said you met that keep you on track and believe in yourself. I mean, that just came that just came natural to me because I came up in a toxic household, mm-hmm. you know. Okay, so, so I had to, you know, learn how to live in that and then when I leave the house, keep it, you know what I'm saying, yeah. positive and you know all that stuff. So growing up the way I did and in the boxing, it was kind of similar. You know, oh, the only yeah. difference yeah. is that I had somebody that has my back in the boxing world. Yeah. At home, I did it. I had my dad outside my head, my mom outside my head, my brothers and sisters already left the house, so I was the only one there. So that's why mm. I said I caught the tail end of it. So that's the only difference. Okay. So, you know, um, it was like just being at home, but now I got somebody who got me. Like, no, you ain't gonna hear that. Yeah. You know? <laughs> how, how do you remain when how and why do you remain so positive, positive. Yeah. throughout all these ups and downs in your life because it could be very hard for people you know you know a couple things either you got it in you to have this tough fighter spirit which you have you know mm-hmm. and then this and it's just very tough to navigate in this world but <clears throat> you you know through your trials and tribulations uh made it a mission to remain positive learn from this and found an outlet like boxing to let go and release I want to know why is that you continue to look at the positive out of it, which is a beautiful outlook. And how, how you do maintain it. Because I always keep in my head that it can always, things can always be worse. You know, I always keep that in my head. Like for example, tomorrow morning I have to go to court because I'm suing my mom. I woke up this morning like, dang, I didn't think that we would still be bumping heads and it would come to this. But then I had to be thankful, like, at least I still have my mom. I woke up in a house. Mm -hmm. I have food to eat. There's somebody that's in the street. It's cold outside. You know, so I I always, Mm. I always think about, I always keep that in my head. Somebody has it worse. And I always think about my blessings, Mm -hmm. just the simple things that I'm up. You know, I have my vision. I have all my limbs. I'm breathing. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm alive. So I always keep that drilled in my head, you know? So that's what keeps me going. What was it like growing up in uh in Haiti when you went back, you know, and having that journey over there? And like you said, you came over here and stuff. So what is the difference, you say, growing up in Haiti and then now coming back over here? Oh, man. When, I love Haiti, you know, because before I end up living there, I used to go on vacations. So the yeah. vacations are always fun. Yeah, but yeah. now I'm living there. So mm-hmm. when I got sent over there, I, was, I wasn't sent to family house. They sent me to a group home. Oh, wow. Oh. Okay. So and now, hook? yes. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> so now I'm in a group home. I'm living there. And um, it, it, it just was, it, it was, man, I don't even, I even describe it. I was hurt. I was hurt that I, that I was lied to, that I was, that I had got left there. And um, it just, it just was a, it was, it was, whew, it was hard. I was in a mm-hmm. dark place, yeah. you know, I, you know, I wasn't with my family members. I'm with this, you know, lady and she was, you know, mean to me. You know, I got in a fight in a group home. I had to, um, I had to leave. The lady called my mother, I guess, and said, I don't want no more girls like Melissa from the United States. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I had gotten to a fight and I left and, you know, but. In that whole process, I learned, I learned that um, not to uh, take, you know, what's that word I want to use? When I came back to America, I appreciated running water. I appreciated mm-hmm. lights. Not to take know, things for granted. Maybe that's. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I learned not to take things for granted. Because when I was over there in the group home, I was washing my clothes, all my clothes by hand. Mm-hmm. I had to make sure I did everything before the sun went down. You know, um, I I was locked in. It was like a prison. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, I, I, now I when I came back to the United States, I appreciated my freedom, mm-hmm. you know, so. I learned that lesson not to take things for granted. Cause even at my family house, you know what I'm saying, we had maids, you know, we was good, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They was washing our clothes, they was making our food, but now mm-hmm. I'm doing all that here, hey. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, I had to make, you know, wear uniforms to school. <laughs> oh. 
How so? How did the journey of you working with kids? Well, hold on. Before, oh, okay. Before okay, I, before we get into that, Rose, yeah, I do yeah. want to get into that. You know, you you shared this 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 journey of you know uh, of sadness of of pain and then finding boxing as this outlet and in, in, in releasing. And you know, sometimes we have these images of of boxers that they don't feel. You know, they just you know they 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 have this anger, right? But yeah. they unleash it to others and. And sometimes I feel like that's not the case, even with comedians or artists, because at the end of the day, we have to take responsibility and, and learn how to uh, heal and forgive others and forgive ourselves. So on this road that you went on to, you know, dish out this pain, this anger and release, did you also learn how to forgive others for what they done to you as well? Or maybe forgive yourself or not to like be hard on yourself that you beat yourself up maybe in certain situations is like, you know, maybe I deserve to be in that spot, blah, blah, blah. You know, did you learn forgiveness as well? Uh, yeah, I, I'm currently working on that with myself, forgiving because I, you know, I, I grew up angry. You right. know, I felt like somebody tried to hurt me or right. try to come for me. I had this anger. So, you know, there's a few people in the boxing world that, you know, I have not forgiven. You know, I'm trying to, you know. Uh, it is hard. Absolutely. It, that, that forgiveness part and that forgiveness part is, is hard because you're still in an angry place. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. it's like, you know, you know, I always tell myself I'm a good person. I wouldn't take advantage of nobody. And yeah. I wouldn't want that happening to me, but it did. And it's like, mm -hmm. these people knew that. Right. You know, mm -hmm. what if, what if something happened? What if I got killed in the ring or something because people die in the ring? This mm -hmm. is, you know, like they say, you can play basketball, you can play soccer, but you don't play boxing. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't play with nobody money. And you don't play with their life in the ring either, just mm -hmm. for a couple of dollars. Yep. You know, so um, I, I'm a fig, I'm a forgiving person. You're on that journey. Forget. You're on the journey. Yeah, Absolutely. Of course. Of, and the important thing is, like our spiritual teacher always taught us, when you when you work on forgiving, it's not about you forgiving the other person, but it's about you forgiving yourself for allowing that person to take your power away. So that's where the right. starts. And, you know, it takes a lot of strength and courage to, and vulnerability to go through that. Right. And I'm definitely there. I definitely forgive myself for a lot of things because I love myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so I definitely forgive myself. Mm -hmm. But, you know, um, forgiving, you know, I'm still on the yeah. trying to forgive. Of course. People. I'll be like, hmm. Right. I come back <laughs> and how, did, how, how, how did you start... Um, what is it? Start believing in yourself like when that that when that wasn't there for you. Right. And I know you had this trainer that was uh, believing in you and you hit the key word of like, oh, I started loving myself and I love myself. And I, I think that's key in any type of and not even profession in life to love yourself is one long battle on one journey of mm -hmm. accepting yourself in the mirror. And it's a, uh, and so, and, it, and it's a never ending process. When did you uh, start loving yourself in that process? Because, mind you, you didn't have that growing up, yeah. right? No one taught you that, like, hey, love yourself. Because all you're seeing is, like, they don't love me because they're doing this. Or people are doing shit to me, so they don't mm -hmm. love me. So what gave you the right to love yourself? And who, what, what sparked that? I always, you know, the funny thing is, when I was younger, I always would question my mom, like, dang, do you love me? Mm. you know that was the whole thing that was my question like do you love me yeah. did I do something wrong is it because I look like daddy or you know mm. I don't understand I always loved myself you know um I think my thing was I didn't think I, I was good enough for the people that loved me that was around me like my parents and my yeah. family you know yeah, because I, of all your I, first I teachers that. yeah Cause I'm like, you know, when all this is going on, how come nobody, you know, tried to come to my aid? Cause you know, I, I was really, really getting, getting it bad, you know? Mm. And, and right now as an adult, I, I, I'm struggling with it now still, yeah. you know, I'm like how, what happened years ago, back in 1993, 94, 96 affected me mm. in 2020. We want to be in 2021. Like oh, it is yeah. more. Yeah. As an adult than it did when I was a teenager and a kid, you know, because I was just yeah. running around like, okay, whatever happened. But now it's like, it, it, you know, it, it's, I have certain relationships. It's, it's, you know, it yeah. affects that, you know, it affects certain relationships or friendships. I'm just mm -hmm. like, that, 
I, I really need a therapist. Right. Yeah. I got to talk to somebody. You know, like tomorrow morning, I have to talk to my mom on a Zoom meeting. I got to do a mediation because now I got to sue her or come to a, some type of meeting. So it's just like she's still angry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, she's still angry at my dad. These niggas met at what? In the 70s. We in 2020. You have a whole new husband. He got a whole new wife. Like, what happened? Yeah. Like, why am I still getting, you know, still getting getting all this fire? Yeah. 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 You know? Yeah, so it's, it's, it's crazy, you know? This yeah. why I didn't even sleep last night. I'm like, dang, you know? Mm. A few hours. Tomorrow morning, I got to look at this woman. You know, she just called the cops on me, blocked my mm. number. You know? And... <laughs> And yeah. it got to come to this for us to talk. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Sometimes, yeah. In that situation. Yeah. No, I mean, there's I mean, there's a lot of things that, you know, that you're going through and what you've been through. That hasn't been communicated. Do you know? And, this, the, and a lot of that stuff, when we go through trauma when we're young, it will always escape us because we still have that little child in us that remembers that, you know. And as we get older, we see it with different eyes, you know, because we're maturing now. Mm-hmm. And the hardest part is l- learning from it, healing from it, and letting it go. You know, and and the, the longer that we don't deal with it, the more it will continue to up. haunt us at different mm-hmm. times. It's random. We could be in the supermarket buying avocados, and all of a sudden we having a moment, like you know. Uh, yeah, I have a lot of those. I have a lot of those moments. I have a lot and with of different those relationships those. too. If you have children, the situation it never got. There was no closure, and then when I do try to find a closure, it's it's still, you know. Yeah. There wasn't no closure, so. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you, though. Uh, we're not done, that, done, but I yeah. want to thank you for being so honest and being so vulnerable to sharing that. You mm-hmm. know, uh, not a lot of people we share a lot of things like that. And we're both open and we share a lot of things, especially if someone has the title of a boxer. They're, they're not going to be sharing things mm-hmm. from their life like that, you know. Uh, so you want to touch on I wanted to touch on um, you also work with autistic children. And I wanted to know how did that start? And, you know, what does it do for you and for them? Oh, it when it started. Actually, my boyfriend is Rafael Vasquez. He was also a boxer. Mm. Um, he was he was signed with uh, the Bella, and he has a daughter. With that the little girl you see, that's his daughter, Kay. Mm. So when he was fighting, he mm-hmm. would always be in the ring with autism. You know, would always uh, you know, show support for autism awareness and everything. So um, her mom passed from cancer. Mm-hmm. And so he had to retire and take care of his two daughters. Yeah. So mm-hmm. he was training me too as well. And I was telling him, like, just because you don't fight no more doesn't mean the fight for autism should stop either. Mm-hmm. You know, if this is something you were doing in the ring. Everybody in Brooklyn, everybody in New York knows. You know what I'm saying? He had the autism socks. If you Google his name, you'll see it. Mm-hmm. And um, I was still fighting. He got me signed with the Bella. He had fighters too. Mm-hmm. And I said, look, we here. Like, look, we'll put the patches on our skirt. You know what I'm saying? We'll get the gloves. I, I fought with the autism gloves. You know, oh, let's just keep it going. Because a lot of people don't know what these puzzle pieces mean, you know, on the different spectrum of stuff. So I stepped in. I said, well, look, um, I'm a represent, you know, for right. autism. And I'm always with his daughter. You know, if he has mm-hmm. to go to to the gym or something, you know, she's with me. Mm-hmm. And, you know, from there, I started, uh, you know, always doing my research on autism and everything. And just so I could understand her, you know, yeah. when I'm with her. And, mm-hmm. um, and to find out I have a little cousin with autism. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, how come I didn't know this? <laughs> what did you learn about that relationship, you know, uh, helping her? And I will imagine she's helping you, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, every day, every day, I I learn something. Um, you know, I pay, you know, I pay attention to her a lot. Like, I wonder, you know, what she's thinking, or you know, uh, where her eyes are. You know, when you know when her standing, when she does this. You know, when I want to know what this was, because a lot of kids have a different things they do. Yeah. But when she does this, it means she's happy. Oh. And I know it's always, you know. So um, from there, I just. Was like, you know, this is something I want to do. And she followed in the footsteps of Eunice. You know, she was the founder for the Special Olympics. And, you know, before Kayleen, 
Um, I've been around other kids with special needs, autism, and I, they always, uh, you know, get to me my way. Mm-hmm. And I always felt the love mm-hmm. way before I met Kaylee. So I always had a special uh, place in my heart for kids with special needs. And I always wanted to do for them because... I feel like people look at them like the underdog. They don't pay attention yeah. to them because they feel like, oh, well, they can't talk or they can't do this. But how, you know, you don't, mm-hmm. so you don't know it like that. You can't just say like, I'm not going to mm-hmm. pay attention to them because they can't pay attention. They can't do this. They can't do that. You don't know that. You know, mm-hmm. these kids, yeah, they, they do stuff with their hands or they probably rock, but you don't know what's going on the inside. They understand mm-hmm. you. Yeah. But they just can't help it. They have certain yeah. things they do, but they understand like you understand. You know, they may not be able to speak back to you or you reply like you would, you know, but they're still human beings. And I feel like uh, they need a light on them. Mm-hmm. I feel I see a connection of how you can relate with them, of how you felt growing up, mm-hmm. in a sense of almost Ignore. being as you know and being uh, ignored not yeah. being understood not and, being, yeah. that's a that's a that's a bad feeling you know mm. when you feel it misunderstood ignored i remember i was learning um I think it was uh seven minus five or something it was first grade and just because I couldn't get it quick so I would draw like the lines like I'll draw like seven lines just mm. when I started learning okay seven lines I still do that now I'm not good at math <laughs> It's so, me neither. But we was learning. <laughs> yeah. This is first grade. And I remember my parents wanted me to get it like right there and there. What is it? What's five minus seven? Yeah. And I'm just like, you know, it's too much. You, my dad yelling, my mother yelling. Oh my and I'm in the middle worse. like, you know what I'm saying? Yo, I was, because I couldn't get it like that, my mom came, boom, duff me out. Come here to boom, 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 oh boom, boom. Yo, duff me, duff me, duff me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And you have to, you know... Instead of them having patience with me, they got angry. And I and I noticed some parents get angry with their kids because they lose patience. You know, once you start to screaming at these special need kids or any kid, you're not gonna get you're not gonna uh, receive whatever you're looking for because you didn't put you scared and put that pressure and then you gave up. You know, these kids don't need to have nobody around them that's gonna give up on them. They need somebody that's gonna be there that's gonna support them because support goes a long way. You know, and I know how that feels, you know. I know I'm not a special need person, but you know what I'm saying? I, 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 they, like I said, they feel what we feel, you know. Yeah. That's something I didn't have either. And that's something yeah. I wouldn't want nobody to feel, especially a child, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, to this day, people be like, oh, Melissa, when you fighting, when you fighting? And for me, it's still like, you want to see me fight? Mm-hmm. Oh, y'all coming to my fight? It's still. Mm. world champion five belts I still feel like that because that's something I didn't get mm. I had before, like I said before boxing I was running track my mother didn't come to the track meets I think I had like a hundred of the track meets she came to um one mm-hmm. she came to one and then the second one my race was done already you know and, and then especially the big meets I would look for in the crowd and it hurt so mm-hmm. I can imagine how these kids feel. You know, it's just like the Kennedys, you know what I'm saying? They, they sent their daughter away because they was embarrassed, you know, oh, yeah. because their daughter had a disability. You mm-hmm. know, it's it's it hurts, you know. Today I was watching Wendy Williams and mm-hmm. Fat Joe was on there. Fat Joe has a uh, son with autism. Yeah. That's right, and yeah. you never really hear him speak or show his son. So mm-hmm. he only showed his wife and his daughter. But yep. what is your mm-hmm. son? Yep. You know, mm-hmm. you hear Tisha Campbell, she talk about her child with autism. You hear mm-hmm. Tony Braxton, she talk about her kid with autism. Mm-hmm. But you know, you have those parents out there, especially West Indian mm-hmm. parents. If you they have a child with a disability, they're embarrassed. You won't see them. Mm-hmm. And um, and they don't even realize like you really hurting that child's feelings, you know. Yeah. You hurt in that child's feelings. So I want to be that person to just be there. You know what I'm saying? So even like after boxing is done, I want to try to get into like, you know, the Special Olympics or or a program with kids, especially need to let them know, like, ah, y'all got it, y'all yeah, good. Yeah, well, so well. You know, mm-hmm. I want to put that smile and bring that light to them. I think that's, that's I think so that's a beautiful journey beautiful. that you shared. Yes. And one thing that I want to comment is a couple things. One, there's Parents that shouldn't be parents at all. Mm-hmm. And from what you shared with your parents, they should never have that title. But um, 
that's one. Two, um, sometimes the love that we never have in the beginning, uh, we end up getting down the road. So I understand that you have all this and absolutely this anger and resentment turn things and this hurt. Absolutely. Because that's fucked up what they did. But like you say, you always count your blessings. I think a lot of you've been blessed with so much love around you now, yes. even if it's maybe from two or three people, you know, it's way more than what you started out with in the beginning. And this relationship that you have uh, with this girl, she's giving you so much love as well. And that you uh, you know, had didn't receive, and you guys are both are lights and gifts to each other. And I think, you know, this journey that you're on is one hell of a, hell of a journey. But I think you have that that love that you always been searching, and um, and you also giving that love mm-hmm. to other people just, because you you recognize it and you know that it's a powerful tool that we all have, and it's also a powerful tool to give to others. And I think that's a blessing as well. Yeah, definitely right about that. Because my boyfriend has a friend. He's a gym owner in Jersey. He also Mm -hmm. has a son with autism. And Mm -hmm. I went to the gym and I'm noticing like, okay, I see the father in the front. I know the father has to work. He's training fighters up in the front. And I just see the son in 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 the back, like just sitting there. So, you know, I'm talking with him. Uh, He's also nonverbal, but I'm there. He can feel. You know, these kids can feel energy. He feels my energy is good. I'm like, you know what? Let's go for a walk. Take him for a walk. And just that one little walk, he was like this. He had me mm-hmm. go to the gym. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, come on, let's go. And he just stuck right there to my hip. And I said, all these kids want is just a little love and attention. That's yes. it. You know, I, you know, it's, um, I get, it, it makes me a little sad when I just see these parents just give these kids a device. Here, take this, oh. and they leave it. They leave them on that thing all day. Yeah. No. I hate that. Take them, you know, take them for a walk. Take them, yes. and, you know, be active. And that's what I'm all about is being active. And that's what they know? want. And uh, that's what I do with my daughter. Like, when I met her in the beginning, she was on the iPad 24-7. Mm. I said, no, nah, we're not doing it. Whenever she got up, when they when he got custody of them, they started staying with us. So whenever she got off the bus, I get off the bus, give her a little snack, and we're at the park. Nice. Take her to the park. She ran around. She going on the slide. We come back. She eat her lunch. You know, um, just you know, try to communicate with her and, and just let her know that, like, you know, you're seen. Yeah. You're important. You know, mm-hmm. not gonna just throw you in front of a device and exactly. keep you stuck there. No, we're not doing that. Mm. So, um, nice. I mm-hmm. really made a big change in her life, her diet, and everything. That's beautiful. I think that, that, and I think she made a big change in yours too. You should be very proud. You should be very proud. Mm-hmm. I know she's proud of you as well. You know, like, you know, you have touched many people already in this life. You touched you me, know? and I just met you. You know, yeah, exactly. You touched me too, and oh. you know, it's you have this beautiful uh, light and gift about mm-hmm. you that I'm telling you that this past that you had, like it, the one where you at now is much greater, and it shines even brighter on the dark that you was once in. Yeah, it, it's crazy. It's crazy, like. You know, I was just like this morning, I was just sitting here thinking like, what? Like, like, you know, I was just thinking like, you know, everything I've been through, you know, a lot of, a lot of girls would have probably just, you know, lose their self already. Mm-hmm. Drugs, you know, different kids by different guys, dead. And, you know, I'm, you know, I'm still here because there's a lot of times I just want to be like, why? Why? Of course, but hey, and you also reason. you have the reason to do yeah. that. <laughs> not to say you don't, but you're not playing the victim twenty four seven. Exactly. Right. You know, and, and you know, just going back to my mom again. You know, it's like uh, I always try to, you know, try to forgive. Like you were saying, you know, we got to learn to forgive ourselves and forgive others. Mm-hmm. And I was trying that with her, but. It is not. It's it's not. It's not working. You know. Well, it's a yeah. It's going to be a it's journey, and, a journey, and it may not yeah. be in this lifetime that you find that road of forgiveness to, is, to but... towards her. But I'm just what I'm trying to say. It's just an ongoing journey. You know. I think just once you let go of that 
power that she still has over you in some mm-hmm. areas, not in a lot of areas, in just certain areas, you know, you'll be more you'll find free. more freedom. Right. And I think the thing is I try to understand because you know, I look at, you know, Kaylee and her sister, they lost their mom. You know, Kaylee's mm-hmm. thirteen, sister's fifteen. These are two young girls who don't have no longer have their mom. Mm-hmm. And then here I go, I have my mom who just treated me like the ugly duckling. You know, so it's just like. You but know, the difference is, the difference is, is that your mom chose to be this way. Yeah, she chose this journey, and she has no excuse to continue this journey this way. She has many opportunities to change, just like mm-hmm. you had many opportunities to change. Everything you've been through, like you said, you hit it in the nose. I could have been into drugs. Yeah. I could have. Angry. I could have had time. forty, uh, forty kids by forty different men, but you didn't. You kept on on this path. Mm-hmm. Well, there was dark times. You still was finding that light in the tunnel. Your parents and your mom chose this lifestyle, chose this route, chose this journey. And correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe you guys had conversations because you seem like the person like, well, let me try to hash this out. Let's try to talk. But it just never worked out to the extent of how you wanted to go in a sense of like, let's just be happy. I'll learn to forgive. and Let's just move forward. It just keeps on happening. So sometimes, you know, this journey is very toxic to ourselves. And we have to learn to like, I did everything I can and everything I could. And to be honest, it comes a time where it shouldn't have, it shouldn't have to come from only me all the time. You know what I'm saying? I need to move away from this. I am the child here. Yeah. You know, I have to move from this now because it's toxic for me and learn to be OK with that decision. Yeah. You know? Because yep, just because that's, that's uh, just because and, and just because because you need to learn how to be OK with that decision because she's been OK with all the fucking decisions she did. But throwing punches at you as a little kid. And that's fucked up. So and she lives with that and she seemed to be fine with that. But at the end of the day, she's going to answer to someone. And I'm annoyed because I don't like when people Me take too. advantage <laughs> of young kids. She's going to answer to someone, whether it's a higher power that you believe in, a God, whatever. She's going to have to answer to someone at the end of the day when it's her time to go. But that's not your journey. That's, that's her, shit. her shit. So yeah. you got to learn how to differentiate her shit and your shit and be like, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And just be like, look, I forgive myself and it's OK how I feel. And it's OK that I just let this relationship be this the way it is. And that's it. But I'm not going to be continue being taken advantage of because at the end of the day, I'm the one, it's affecting me. It's not affecting you because it seems like you're fine, you know? Right. Um, so now we're going to the, the last segment. And um, it's just, we're asking you two questions and just say whatever comes from the top of your, your head. So the first question is, what do you love about yourself? My spirit. Mm. Love that. My spirit is like a bright star, you know, that no matter like, the situation I mean I, I I always find a you know a way just to just keep fighting so I gotta I, I love my spirit I got a fighting spirit a positive spirit the second question is what do you think is the meaning of your life I I think I'm like a like a healer <laughs> nice like a healer like a like an earth angel mm. Mm. I love that that's beautiful and then this last one is uh is like reflection cards and they all have like different uh questions on it so I shuffled them and I just picked one now and we're gonna find out what are the two questions for this um what is one thing that is unique about the place you grew up Um, what did I say about Long Island? <laughs> well, since I was little growing up there, there was a lot of kids in my neighborhood, so I always had people to play with. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> uh, what has been your favorite age so far and why? Ooh. I, I, I want to do the Oprah part. I've been fighting all my <laughs> life. <laughs> Oh <laughs> uh, well, uh, maybe ten. You know, you know, 
there was more bad times and there was some good times. So I want to say like maybe 10 years old because my mom, she did like to travel. So, of course, she brought me with her. So I already been to places like Hawaii, Europe, mm-hmm. young, the Bahamas. Wow. I already was traveling before boxing. 